What's good, everyone? So I kind of wanted to go over this video um, just because I'm not really a fan of mainstream news. And uh, I'm pretty sure Fox News is just like Democrats bad. Just kind of wanted to go over this and like talk a little bit about what's going on. I haven't really gone deeply into this video, but this is mainly a, a pretty much about like where we're buying our crude oil, uh, gas, all that type of stuff. Um, and like, I think we're trying, like having talks about buying from Venezuela and then talks about like, uh, not going, not, not buying any more from Russia. So I just kind of wanted to go over that. And then like, I'll give you a little bit of criticism. It's like a seven minute video. We'll see how far I get into it. We're back with a Fox news alert An agreement to restore the Iran nuclear deal expected within days, Russia there to broker the deal as it attacks Ukraine. Today, you're watching oil prices. The average price of regular gasoline topped $4 a gallon. Oh, by the way, those of you that um, have been uh, keeping track of the videos I put out, the one I put out about Trump uh, pretty much says, like, if pretty much everything stays the same as how it's going, if the elections were held right now, I believe Trump would win. Uh, the fact that there's a, there's a video of Trump going around with, hey, the, you know, gas is like $2 with me in here with Biden, it'd be seven, eight, nine, And then there's like gas prices are like 7 almost $8. I do think that uh, if the elections were held today, Trump would win. Uh, that's that's my opinion, and also the whole like Ukraine stuff. But yeah, I just I just think Trump looks like a stronger leader than Biden. All right, let's continue. And premium gas prices across the country hit a new all-time high. Crude oil is at its highest point in about a decade. This fueling Republican backlash of Biden's energy policies. Yep, that is true. Uh, for those of you that went over the podcast that Trump recently talked about, he talked about how it's not really that we're Starting to sanction Russia, it's more that, you know, the policies Biden put into place. Um, all right, let's continue. The administration's choices when he first came into office put us in this tenuous position with energy independence in the United States. Instead of being an exporter of energy, we became a consumer of Russian oil. This needs to... Very, okay, that, this is like very misleading. So yes, we did become a consumer, but let me, I'm just going to show you guys like the numbers. So this is the, okay, hold up. This is the chart of our actual numbers, okay? So this is, like, most of our oil, at least 52% of it comes from Canada. I might have to do the percentile calculations. I only did it for Canada, and then I did it for Russia, just because I wanted, I wanted to know the percentile we get from each of them. Um, and Russia uh, does come in at, um, the like, you know, third biggest at 245,000 uh, barrels. But, um, yeah, it's only 8% of the U.S., like, you know, crude oil and um gas and everything like that um uh, petroleum other stuff so it's very it's a very small percentile so when you say like yeah we like you know like oh we're a consumer of russian stuff it's like yeah but it's not like like yes it'll like if we if we for example like just completely stopped buying from russia and didn't get a new supplier which i think biden's doing um when he's trying to buy from like saudi arabia and i think venezuela um it's it's not going it'll raise the gas prices but it's not going to destroy our economy you know um, let's get back to this video. Stop. This notion that somehow banning Russian oil would raise prices on American consumers is an admission that this guy, that this killer, that this butcher, Vladimir Putin, has leverage over us. Every single country that trades globally with America has some type of leverage over us, by the way. So for, so for example, China has a bunch of leverage over us. And, um, what's another, like, we, we trade with uh, India a lot too, I think. So yeah, there's so a lot of like, you know, countries that have leverage over the United States. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, well, like they're bad people. We shouldn't trade with them. One of the reasons you're supposed to have global trade and everything is to incentivize people to not go to war. Uh, we're kind of seeing this with Russia, how it's pretty much the most sanctioned country on the face of the earth. Granted, um, they're super sanctioned. Uh, we don't really, I like, think their uh, ruble is like almost worthless now, but they weren't entirely like uh they, their economy wasn't entirely like connected to pretty much everything so they may survive the sanctions but we want to get to a point where even if like countries hate each other there's so much like global trade between them that if you wanted to go to war with a country that uh you'd pretty much cr like just cripple your economy and destroy your nation that way it uh, makes it so you're not incentivized to go to war we want we don't want any more wars in the world uh, we prefer not. We prefer not to have to do any of those anymore. Uh, let's continue. Why would we want that leverage to continue? Why? Why would we have someone like him to? Have All right. Yeah. I explained the whole global economy thing. Um, 
you just want to de do you want to de uh, you don't want you want to uh, make sure war is just way too bad for the economy to actually do it uh yeah have the power to raise gas prices on americans we have weakened our okay also it's very slightly one almost again only eight percent so it's, it's, it'll, it will raise but the main reason why the gas prices are higher right now is because of uh the actual like restrictions that come um from i think i forget which uh acronym biden joined again but it's pretty much like the green energy one and, and like put way more restrictions on our energy district herself and it's because the leftist their focus is on climate as their religion what we have to do is say okay for the record um trump talked about the whole climate stuff I, if we if we became like a super green like uh energy supplier with nuclear energy i think that would be phenomenal uh we could easily do that we easily have enough money to, it's like 4.2 billion dollars for every nuclear power plant it takes like eight years to create one um yeah we could we could definitely do that and like it'd be fine. Um, we could, yeah. I mean, I I don't see why not. I I, do, I don't think I'm not for the whole like pushing wind energy. Um, like that is obviously like not a good thing to push. Uh, it takes a lot of fossil fuels to do and everything like that. But uh, I mean, I kind of don't want to screw up our planet as much as we are. I mean, I <laughs> I mean, we could be like, oh, it's bad. They're thinking about. It. It's like, well, we should probably focus on the Ukraine Russia thing first, but. Climate change is definitely a thing, especially when you had Trump coming out and uh, being like, yeah, it's a it's a thing in the second debate and everything like that. So, like, I don't know. Like, I don't like when people like trying to be negative on climate change now. It's just and it's just like it's it's to the point where like South Park had to come out and apologize. It's just it's not a it's not good aesthetically, like for the Republicans to do that. I just say at this point, if you're a Republican, just drop the whole like anti climate change stuff. It just it just looks so bad for anyone, uh, that's, you know keeping up with uh, different types of politics, different networks and all that jazz. You just look kind of nutty if you talk about it. Common sense has to prevail in that. We are an energy-based economy. I mean, that is common sense. We are energy-based. Every first world country is energy-based, all right. Sean, it's astonishing that President Biden had stood up in front of the American people and at least made the case of why are they paying we're, we're this close to paying record high gasoline prices in this country. Tomorrow we'll probably hit a new record north of $4. I didn't watch Biden's speech, so I have no comment on this portion. Was an 11 cents a gallon. And diesel prices tomorrow are going to hit a new record high. That filters through inflation because trucking and flying anything and everything in this country to its destination is going to co cost more. And Biden is nowhere to be found in explaining this to the American people. Um... I mean, he could explain to the American people. I just don't think Biden's that good of a, like, not anymore. I don't think he's that good of a public speaker. He, I think he used to be. Just he's kind of like, what's it called? It's like, um, it's like sundowning or something like that. That's what he's like. He's, he has some good speeches sometimes, but then other times he just has no idea what's going on. Walk in different directions. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with him. Like when you try and hold Biden as accountable, it's way different than like Trump accountable. Cause you know, Trump's like all the way there where biden i like i'm like i don't know if he's all the way there i don't think like for example i don't think biden could do a podcast like trump did um like with no one else like prepping him like what's going to be asked like stuff like that uh i don't think i, I think yeah trump can i don't think uh biden could but that's gonna continue the video cool. So I'm going to explain it, Dagan, because oil, however you guys say oil, is oil, right? So whether it comes from Venezuela or Iran or Russia, um, by the way, American oil is cleaner than Russian oil. It begs the question, why don't we produce American oil? It's American jobs. It's American security. It's American revenue to our federal Well, that has, I think that has to do with uh, trying to prevent climate change. They want one of the like, major superpowers to not produce oil, um, which I, I get. Like, you probably want to phase China out of doing it as well. Then you probably want India to stop doing it as well, but they're producing like eighty percent of it right now. Um, it'd be better, but I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just how it's just how it is. All right, let's continue. Federal coffers, and I think the answer is in the thought leader of the Democrat Party, which is Bernie Sanders, right? Bernie Sanders loved the communist Venezuelans. He loved the old Soviet Union. He signed on to the Iran. That is true. Bernie Sanders did have like pictures of him. I think he had his honeymoon in Russia, didn't he? Something like that. Something like that. Deal. So these are people who don't believe in making America strong. Their policies make America weak. Okay. I mean, 
technically, I mean, it is making us reliant on another country. But once again, I th- I think it's better for countries to at least be somewhat reliant on other countries. So that way, it de- it just makes it so war doesn't happen. And, like, I-, I may live in this country, but I served in the military. I don't want us to, like, I don't want us to go to war over something stupid and like granted, like some types, uh, sometimes I think some there's some countries that are isolationist, and don't really trade with other countries. I think it's better to trade, like when you're a superpower, to trade with other countries. Maybe make your economy more reliant on others because it does put that big restriction on going to war. And I think war should be avoided at every point. We're at a point in history that's never been done before, to where we can make it so all the superpowers just are at a point where if they go to war. It'll crush their economy, and pretty much no world leader that's in those superpowers is going to want to do that. Um, Let's continue. Then if we go even to the Green New Deal, where do we buy windmills from and solar panels and batteries from? That whole green... I'm I'm not not defending the Green New Deal. I will will not (laughs) pay people that don't want to work. Okay, that was nuts. That was nuts. I'm not not even going to try and defend that bill, okay? Not in America, we buy them from China. And take another step further, Dagan, they're, they're trying to teach our kids critical race, they're teach our American- Okay, for the record, a lot of the stuff that, okay, because I, I hear this critical race theory here all the time. Critical race theory, um, it's, it's pretty much talking about socioeconomical differences, uh, which socioeconomical differences are like, on average, like a black family is going to be more poor than a white family. And it's just going over percentiles, which is fine, by the way. Um, it's just when you get these like weird people that are like, like te- the teachers aren't like always the best people. They don't get paid a ton of money, and you do get these really weird zealots uh, that do try and just they just hate white people. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It's not really like part of critical race. It's not like if you I'm in college. Like if you learn about this like this type of stuff, it's not really like. Uh, like hate white people. It's just talking about history and different socioeconomical differences. Which, by the way, most people uh, that have like you know looked into this type of stuff or like have gone through like the schooling system in the past, like I want to say like fifteen, twenty years, um, probably already know this. Um, it's just like I think it's a cool word that that uh, Republicans are latching onto. Then they'll like point to like this, this, and this. There's like a couple things. And they're like, oh, this is the critical race here. It's like, no, those are just racist people that hate white people. Um, yeah, let's continue. And kids how to hate their history and hate their country. So I am really hard pressed to make. To be fair, like learning about Christopher Columbus and all the horrible stuff he's done. He's still like a great man. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, like he's the best person. I don't think you should. Sh- I don't think you should sugarcoat um, history. I think it's it's important to learn about what actually happened, um, so that way you can you know prevent it from happening again, and how people got there and everything like that. But it's also okay to be like, well, yeah, he might have like you know raped, murdered, genocided, like just been a terrible, terrible human being. But he also is pretty much the reason we're here in America today. And in my opinion, I love this country, so I will pay homage to him and be like, yeah, he's a great guy. Like not not great guy, sorry great man um not really a good guy there we go let's continue make an argument how democrats love america and want america to be strong because everything they do is making this country weaker and less secure less safe and respect um yeah i mean i think he's talking more about like the illegal immigration stuff and even if you like listen to a lot of democrats they're like they're not i mean some of them do now because like trump made it so you kind of had to but Bernie Sanders back in the day, I mean, even he was like, yeah, we don't like the whole uh, uh, legal immigrants coming over. That's a Koch brothers proposal. So I don't know. I don't like it when you like, was it try and like make an entire group a hive mind? I really don't like that. Um, Democrats do it with Republicans too. When they say like they're Nazis, like you got like what, like Nick Fuentes. Um, he was part of the whole like new like Nazi party group. But then you got Marjorie Taylor Greene going there and speaking. And then there's like one other Republican. And then, like, then they can, like, group the rest of Republicans into that. And then Republicans, like, will do the same with Democrats. I just don't like that. I don't like it when you try and make a whole giant group um, into pretty much a hive mind. Because that's not accurate at all. Um, and it makes a lot of people just hate the other side, too. Uh, to the point where, like, sometimes discussion doesn't even happen. Um, let's continue. Spending way more money as they implement their policies. Joey, uh, 
Sean mentioned Venezuela. U.S. officials have gone down to meet with the Venezuelan regime to discuss oil exports that were cut off. In By the way, okay, if you're doing this, so if you're thinking about sanctioning Russia, I, I don't, like, to my knowledge, like, Venezuela is what, just a, I don't, I don't think they're currently in a war, are they? Um, they might be, I, but I, I don't think so. I think I would have maybe heard about it, if, especially if they're going over Venezuela right now. Uh, but if you want to sanction a country, um, it's good to get some, like, before you actually do sanction them, it's good to find a replacement. Um, so, I mean, like, we're already trading with people that don't like us. I mean, China doesn't really like us. Russia didn't like us. Like, I mean, we're trading with the Middle East, too. They don't really like us either. I mean, like, a lot of countries don't like us. So, like, I don't know. Um, I think it's a good thing that uh, we're starting to try and replace the Russian um, fossil fuels and everything with Venezuela. That's, that's my opinion on that. In, beginning in 2019 by the Trump administration. Russia, in the middle of the Iran deal, is uh, wants guarantees that Ukraine-related sanctions won't prevent it from trading with Tehran. And you've got Anthony Blinken now talking about the U.S. is weighing a Russian oil ban. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're probably, yeah. Like, like I said, they're probably, like, when they're saying weighing an oil, a Russian oil ban, it's pretty much they want to secure um, oil from another nation before like they cut off come off because i would just that i'm granted like that will like i said it'll be negligible but it'll still directly affect our economy and it'll affect gas prices even more um so yeah it's smart smart thing to do um i i agree with uh, that decision i do, i don't understand by the way u.s refiners are all she doesn't understand she doesn't understand because fox news has now become the biden bad no matter what they are pretty much the representation of what CNN was during the Trump administration, which is sad. Um, I don't think Tucker is exactly like that. I still think he has some of his own opinions, but for the most part, Fox News is pretty much just, it's, it's just, uh, I hate Biden porn for most like people that just hate Biden for some reason, which by the way, it's, he's not like, he's super corrupt and everything. It's just, he, he's not really there, like all there. So it's really hard for me to just like hate him, you know, like. I don't know. Um, he's not he's not a Trump. He doesn't say out like crazy stuff and make people go wild with what he says. And you didn't know if we were going to war. You didn't know if he was bombing mom. Like you didn't know what was going on with Trump. And uh, I don't know. Like you kind of Biden just kind of slowly going out of snail's pace. You kind of know what's going on. So like I don't I don't get the whole like trying to hate on Biden stuff. But let's continue. Already um, cutting off uh, buying additional Russian oil, about a third of Russia already off the market. But I don't know how any okay, so of this makes market, sense in terms is. of this administration wants to continue to buy oil from regimes that hate us. Once again, uh, this is going back to uh, the whole global trade thing. Um, you want to make it so that war is not a, um, a good thing for the economy. Uh, you want to make it so no one wants to go to war. The U.S., while we are the number one superpower right now, there may come a time where we're not. And um, might be later in this generation, maybe in the next generation, maybe a little bit further than that. We don't know. But if we're not the number one superpower, kind of don't want the possibility of someone like, you know, wanting to be like, let's go to war with the United States. Uh, so, yeah, good thing, good, good thing that, the, you know, with the whole global trade stuff, even if it is with countries that hate us. Let's continue. Like uh, mm. Venezuela, but won't sign off on one <laughs> new drilling permit here in the U.S. Yeah, well, you can spit in my face. I mean, I think, I think it's just like they're trying. I think, I think most people are just trying to make it so that some of the superpowers that have the money to go into green energy are trying to go into green energy. Although I do disagree with windmills once again. Like, I don't know why we're just not push, pushing a bunch of, like, nuclear energy. I think it's just because uh, some Democrats just are like, nuclear, scary, brr, like, should 100% be going nuclear right now. Um, there's, there's no reason not to, I don't think, uh, at least based on the report I did. Uh, even Trump, I think, talked about it, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, Trump talked about it in, in the, uh, the podcast he did as well. Um, so you got a lot of nuke boys on his side for that one base and tell me it's raining but thankfully we have fox weather right so there's a litmus test here on information when jen Psaki stands at the podium and says that our gas prices are going up because russia is invading ukraine that is textbook gaslighting i mean if we're already because she said we're already sanctioning some of the stuff right so i mean that's technically true 
So it's, I mean, it's, it does, it is going up a little bit because of that, but I mean, the majority of the reason is because of, um, the restrictions that Biden, the Biden administration has put on, um, you know, our, our own, our own manufacturing for it here. Right. Like that's, that's the main reason. Um, so, I mean, it's a partial reason. So, I mean, but I mean that politicians do that all the time to pretend like the Trump administration didn't do that is crazy. Pretend that the uh, Obama administration did. I mean, every administration does it. They're like, they try and. They try to deflect blame. Um, let's continue. And it tells you the administration is not interested in an honest conversation about this. These things don't happen overnight. Russia isn't the singular reason why our gas and, and energy is going through the roof. I don't know who this guy is. He's correct. I don't know who he is. Good on you. Uh, I don't know who this guy is. It's not the only reason. But he is, he is, he did, he is kind of like, it, I know he's like, it's Fox News, so you have to kind of just like just hate hate on the Biden administration, but he is saying like he did when he is saying it's not the only reason he's saying it is partial reason. Um, so yeah, I mean he's yeah seems, seems I, yeah agree with that. Just like meat packers aren't why we have inflation in the grocery store, uh, but an administration willing to blame meat packers for inflation on groceries is very willing to blame Russia for bad energy policy. All of these. I mean, that's what kind of what you do in politics, right? You, cause you, you have like, the thing is with our politics is you have to like, look good. Like if, if we lived in like a dictatorship and like Biden, like, or whoever gets in elected, right? Like hypothetically, um, didn't have to worry about elections. They probably would be more honest about like why they were doing it. But I mean, I'm kind of glad we don't. And you know, I, I like democracy. I think, uh, I think a lot of people do especially in this country, America, the home of the brave and the free, you know, all that jazz. So <clears throat> I kind of like it that, uh, you know, we have elections and all that stuff. So that, that just kind of comes with uh, elections. You kind of just have to, you know, shift blame, deflect, all this type of stuff. It's kind of just what, how you got to do it. Things are things that have built up over the last couple of years or several years. And I think that the nuance here is what gets overlooked. It's not about just more drilling. It's not about just a pipeline. It's about administration having a posture towards energy that gets American investors excited and allows us to go tap the energy we have. And that's what we don't have. I mean, um, I mean, I, I don't think I think the thing that would get a lot of Americans super excited, especially from like military people. Because a lot of us, like, at least, okay, I was in the Navy. So a lot of us have actually been on aircraft carriers. So we actually know that nuclear energy does work, like, really well. Um, and I think if you'd have a, a bunch of, like, people, I mean, you know, supporting, like, nuclear energy, that, that'd excite a lot of people. Um, it's just, uh, it seems like too many people are scared to, like, bite the bullet on it, um, which kind of sucks. I think if we had a moderately popular politician just, you know, kind of kind of talk about it. I mean, I think... Please hold up. Yeah, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Yeah, is in support of it too. So it's it's a pretty popular opinion. It's just I think a lot of people don't don't uh, follow um, information on it and are pretty scared about you know all the nuclear um, facilities that have you know shut down and everything like Chernobyl and stuff. Uh, let's continue. Well, there hasn't been one new onshore federal uh, lease um, from the Biden administration. I don't know what she said. I, I, don't, I don't know what she just said. I'm just going <laughs> to She fumbled. I, I don't know. OK, I'm just going to continue in his time in office. I, I can talk. I the day this man took office, I started talking about they're going taking a jackhammer to our energy sector and it is american prosperity and also yeah i mean that's yeah i feel like that's right right yeah i mean we, we said to start buying oil again right yeah actually i guess like the manufacturing not really like the energy all of it right because like we replaced replaced what we were producing with what we were buying right it was just it was just more advantageous to buy it instead of produce it but, I mean, I don't know if I agree with that. It gives us power over nations that hate us. So we... Okay, they need to stop saying nations that hate us. Most... Okay, most people hate America. Most of our allies hate America. They think we're douchebags, okay? Um, like, it's, it's... Like, don't pretend like, oh, like, we when, when Trump was in, everyone loved us. No, they hated us. Like, they still hate us. Like, it doesn't matter. You want global trade to prevent wars. My... Like... 
don't don't pretend like you have this isolation type mentality because I'm not down for that. And I think a lot of people aren't down for that either. At that point, if America becomes isolationist, we are going to go to war with China, I believe. I 100% believe that. Uh, if America became isolationist and we, you know, were self-sufficient, all this type of stuff, we would 100%, I think, go to war with China. He ceded power and wealth to Vladimir Putin by not opening up the spigot, if you will, not by, uh, by a relief. She needs, to, she needs to give her place. I don't, like, she is fumbling over everything. Maybe it's a bad day for her. Um, she is, should not be a news anchor. Like, I don't know what's going on with her. Um, and maybe, yeah, just a bad day today, I guess. But I, like, she is fumbling over every, every which, which thing. And I'm like, I'm trying to like piece together what she's saying. Um, yeah, let's continue. Leasing leases and, and drilling in this country, Alicia. And this is what's happened. We don't like, have any know, way of fighting. We don't have any way of offsetting, cutting off Vladimir Putin and Russian oil exports because we're not drilling enough in the United States. No, we can we can do it. I think we're gonna do a try with it. once again. Like, go back to this right over here. Okay, like we we can cut them off. We could cut them off cold turkey. It would just it, it's it's like political suicide for the Biden administration. Like, they're two hundred forty five thousand out of uh, it's like two point eight something. Yeah, but it's, it's like two, it's like almost three million. So it's very small. Per, it's eight percent, eight point four percent. So it's not like I mean it's it's a lot. Like it's almost ten percent, but it's not like completely like ruining america's economy um so yeah i don't know i don't agree with that states so what i can tell you is um after the keystone pipeline project was cut off i went to nebraska and talked to the workers who were down there but i also talked to the governor pete ricketts republican of nebraska who made the point that first of all the demand doesn't change right and if we're talking about that is true that's why we started buying it instead of producing it you still need the demand was still there we just didn't have the supply anymore. Um, actually, I guess we technically had the supply, but it was going to be cheaper to uh, ship it uh, from another country. About climate change and you're worried about your carbon footprint, a produced barrel of oil is a produced barrel of oil. Regardless of where that happens, there's going to be a carbon footprint. Yes, but uh, I think the restrictions when it comes to um, to like everything Bi the Biden administration was trying um, – is to try to get us to produce more green energy. Although, once again, it seems like they're too scared to talk about nuclear energy, and I think they're talking about, like, windmills and solar. Like, granted, solar is okay, but it requires a massive amount of silver, and um, I think that's, I think that's like, over in one, one, of the, uh, one of the Middle Eastern countries has. I forget which one. Uh, they have huge silver deposits, which is why we still trade with them. Um, but, uh, yeah, when it comes to, like, green energy, like, you probably should... Do it. I want. I want this planet to be uh, around as long as possible. You know, so probably should do it. Um, should be pushing nuclear right now. It seems like the best option when you look at uh, the scale of uh, how much um, CO two emissions is produced when you do it versus like after you produce it. Like it's, it's like quite a bit, and then after a while, it's just nothing but green energy. Um, and once again, it, I think it's just not pushed. I think this is this, so. This is my theory. I think it's not pushed because it takes like eight to ten years to make one. And uh, most politicians are only on like two to four year terms. Um, so I think that's just why it's not talked about. It's not just not popular because if you're, if you're running like as a politician, right? Um, like what you get two terms as like governor and then two terms as president. So if you started like passed a bill for it, right? And cost four point whatever billion, right? It's like, I think it's like 4.2 billion. You're then... Um, not going to see, not going to reap the rewards of it until after, and this is after you get elected, by the way. So after you get reelected, so you, you're already at an eight year, eight year mark. You then are out of office and, uh, the next guy that comes in gets to take credit for it. Not you, not you at all. Um, that's kind of why I think it's not popular. That's my theory on it. If you have a different theory, um, maybe we can talk about it, but I mean, I, I fully believe that that is, that is why it's just, it's, it's one of those things you don't see an automatic result of. So it's just not going to be pushed by any politician. Like you, you have, like, if you're a politician, you want to, you want to reap the rewards of what, if your policy, you know, you want to take credit for it. So like if you're governor or whatever, 
and like, oh, you're governor after eight years. You you want to like then go into like president. You want to then go and be like, ah, oh, I've been governor now. I can go into president. But if your if your uh, state doesn't see the rewards of it, and you it, like, and you're not going to see like a majority of it until like probably like twelve or sixteen years uh, after um, you initially put it in. Um, they're just they're just going to be like, well, at this point, uh, you lost your momentum um, from politics. So that's probably just why no one cares about it. Let's play again. Rent to the earth. And so if you're looking at, let's say, Venezuela, then you're also talking about adding the fossil fuels that it takes to get it here because it has to then travel. And She's 100 percent right. Um, and because we're not pushing nuclear energy, um, it does. It, it is just it is just kind of nothing but detrimental um, to the environment. That is true. It just looks good when you're part of a plan that. Um, I guess is making America more green, but they're not really pushing for the one that's making it the most green. So it's just, it's just kind of posturing in my opinion. So she's actually right. Uh, I agree with her. Yeah. And that's where his frustration came. And I think a lot of Americans are experiencing that as well. Yep. Me included. Um, it is extraordinarily frustrating that we're not pushing for nuclear yet. I'll just quote Andy Liff, Al, <laughs> Alicia. Yeah. What Sean is that Joey or Sean? One, what, what? One last point. This is Sean. So I, I think we can't also forget that the woke Wall Street banks and hedge fund managers that control a lot of American money now because they're so woke don't want to invest in oil and gas. And so sometimes. Well, it's not really that they're woke. They're just they're just looking where the money is at. And if like right now, if like I'm an investor, I'm probably going to be investing in like uh, some of like the like some type of coin or something now at this point. Right. <clears throat> Maybe. Uh, I mean, or like some different type of energy, like just anything but it, especially because like it can, it, I mean, like a lot of the reason people do certain things is just because of pushback on social media. It's like if some like, you know, a big investor over in like Wall Street or whatever, uh, then wanted to like support like gas and everything, which by the way, I don't think there's like none. I just think there's like some that aren't. Um, they just probably don't want to get like dragged through the mud on social media, which would in fact uh, affect their like prices and everything or stock prices. Um, that's interesting. There's a money flow to get these new wells online isn't there. They're all they've all gone crazy woke. I don't think that's true. I just I don't think they're actually woke, um, at all. I think you can have a, like a like I don't know I don't know what this guy's interpretation of woke is actually, but I, I not in my opinion now. Uh, and we. Go ahead. No, I, I was just going to add one thing. Andy Lipow, who I rely on, he's a, a, a great source for information on the oil and uh, gas business. The U.S. is producing all it can right now to increase production. We have to drill more wells. If we want more oil in the U.S., we have to drill for it. Don't dial one. By the way, okay, so this is my opinion on this. So I actually kind of agree with, with whoever she's quoting. Um, if you're not going, if you're going to then put restrictions on us, um, via like for green energy around the world, right. Which I think you should, but I also think that, that you should then start going for the most beneficial type of energy source, which is then going to be nuclear. Um, and so if you're not going to do that and then you want, still want to like, maybe like, you know, not be affected by the, um, the sanctions we're going to do on Russia, which I guess we partially are already doing. Um, then you're going to pretty much either want to buy from another country um, or you're going to want to start doing it in your own country. Because, um, I mean, we're a first world country. We have a massive amount of energy that we need. Um, so yeah, you kind of kind of got to bite the bullet on it. But, I mean, if, we're, if we once again, if we get it from like Venezuela or one of the other Middle Eastern countries, I mean, that's fine too. doesn't matter. Just, I mean... I mean, even if we if we if we don't, it's not going to affect our economy drastically. Just, it will affect gas prices. Eight percent is still quite a lot. Um, but yeah, let's continue. We, won't get, we got like thirty seconds left. One eight hundred OPEC. OPEC plus that includes Russia. And at about seven months into the Biden administration, they actually had the audacity to ask OPEC to pump more oil. Ask Russia to pump more oil. That's that's the idiocy of this administration. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we should push for nuclear energy. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's it. Like if you're going to like put restrictions on America, granted, I do, I do think we should still be trading with other countries globally. Like I think once again, stops wars. Um, but if you're going to do that, you should also like put in a lot of funding towards nuclear energy. And like, we're just not, we're just not, it's, it's super detrimental to politicians. Like it's going to be like an eight year thing before it's 
it's even completed and producing green energy. And it's going to be like 16 years before that energy we, we produced into making the nuclear uh, reactors and the factory is, you know, like replaced pretty much. Like it, it's, it just, it, it just sucks. It just sucks. Um, it sucks that it takes so long. And um, maybe if people could get elected, like if you're like president, you could go like a third or fourth term, maybe um, same with governors, maybe. I don't know. Maybe that'd fix it. Or maybe we just have to have politicians that are looking out for the longevity of America, which it seems like we don't. Alicia, back to you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. All right, that's it. That is the video. If you like the video, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm thinking about doing a uh, live stream um, either Monday or Tuesday. Um, it would be at uh, 6 p.m. Um, Pacific time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you th you want to you think you're gonna be there something like that comment uh, if you like the video like it share it sharing is the best thing if you share it it's crazy for me uh, give me a bunch of subscribers um, yeah that's it peace out everyone.